This here is a viewer's broken gaming PC. And in this video, we're gonna try to fix it. This system has a very strange backstory. If you can believe this, it's been down according to the owner for over a year. I, I simply cannot wrap my head around the fact that a, a build has been down for this long and nothing's been done about it. Actually, the owner, to, to be fair, did try to do something about it. He took it to Geek Squad and uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't go so well. So when he took this system in, they charged him $100 I don't know why, but they charged him a hundred bucks to not even diagnose the problem. They initially assumed it was his graphics card that wasn't sending a picture out. His system appeared to turn on, the, the fans would spin, things would light up, but you could never get a picture out. So they naturally focused on the graphics card, which I don't really blame them for. That's probably one of the first things I would have tried as well. And apparently they swapped this card out with one of their cards into his build. They swapped this card into one of their test beds and they still couldn't get a picture out. And then they told him that essentially they couldn't fix it. And they took off with his $100. What, what kind of service is that? Now to be fair, I am going off the word of this system's owner and for all I know, he could have it out for Geek Squad. Maybe he just has some like personal vendetta. I don't know, but I, I can tell you what he told me as to the reason why this hasn't been fixed for so long. He assumed, well, if Geek Squad can't fix it, I mean, what's the point bringing it in anywhere else? Somebody spending money so that, you know, other people just end up telling me the same thing. It's unfixable. We can't figure out what's wrong. Well, now it's in this studio and I can personally guarantee you we're going to figure out whatever the heck is wrong with this. And if it does end up being the graphics card, usually I make exceptions for these builds when it comes to replacing cards because I don't get cards from vendors either, right? I have to pay out of pocket for these. But if the graphics card is the reason why this system is not working, I will personally replace it. I will dip into my own pocket and buy him a replacement card on eBay. This card in here actually isn't even that powerful, so it wouldn't be difficult to give him an upgrade. Pretty sure it's an HD 7700, somewhere in that ballpark. And he's obviously using a Ryzen platform, AMD, that the stock Wraith Stealth cooler there. He has what looks like an NVMe drive here from Team Group at the bottom. And this case is from MSI. Now the power supply in here, he swapped out because he wanted to put a, a discrete card in here. Obviously the CPU, uh, this Ryzen chip doesn't have integrated graphics. So he needs a dedicated card to run picture out. And that's why this uh, kind of cheap placeholder is here. Uh, but he swapped a power supply so that he had dedicated PCI power. And I actually have the old unit. I'm gonna test that for him. He also wants me to test another graphics card that he is not sure of whether or not it works or not. Again, Geek Squad couldn't give him any answers. He actually brought a second card in and we, we don't know if it works or not, but uh, we're gonna test everything and we're gonna definitely get to the bottom of why this build is not posting. So be sure to stick around for the ride, stay with me. NZXT's BLD Foundation pre-built PCs are a great way for folks to easily get into PC gaming without breaking the bank. Reel in over 100 FPS in League and Valorant and over 60 FPS in Fortnite, all with settings at medium and in 1080p. That ain't too bad at all. And perhaps best of all, this build is super easy to upgrade down the line with a discrete graphics card, since you've still got six multi-threaded Zen 3 CPU cores to pair it with. NZXT's BLD pre-builds waive the $99 build fee since they're made in bulk, and you'll get a two-year parts and labor warranty with every purchase. Learn more about BLD systems, including this foundation PC here, via the link below. Now, for those who aren't aware, this playlist is fix or flop. Sometimes I abbreviate it FOF, that's the acronym kind of unofficially, but uh, if I'm just describing the playlist or wanting to reference the name, sometimes I'll put that instead. And what we do here is attempt to fix viewer systems in and around the Orlando, Florida area, generally, for free. We charge zero dollars and zero cents, so long as the owners are okay with us taking on their systems for a few days and filming these troubleshooting processes. We can monetize these videos externally via YouTube AdSense and other external brands. And because of that, I don't feel like offloading any of that, you know, cost, what would be a cost to the owners because they're already gracious enough to loan us their systems for a few days. Now, again, with respect to this build here, I know nothing about this system apart from the fact that it has had um, a bit of a history and that it does not post. The owner told me that the fans will spin, that things do light up, but that no picture is sent out whatsoever. In fact, it even sounds sometimes like it's power cycling to them. So, Let's get to the bottom of it. Now, one of the most important troubleshooting steps is also the first step you should take, and that is to verify that the system is exhibiting the symptoms that are described by the owner ahead of time. If what you're seeing in the office doesn't add up with what they're describing, you might have a different problem on your hands, and you might wanna contact them before diving into a project like this. 
So the system is on and we have all the lights from the fans lighting up. The CPU fan is not spinning. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, but no post. Hmm. I don't know why I keep waiting. I'm waiting for something to happen, but nothing is happening. Okay, so what we can do now, uh, we can't plug the HDMI cable into the motherboard because the CPU in here from AMD does not have integrated graphics. So that's gonna do us no good. What we can do, let's see, do we get any signal detected? No, no signal. So no signal at all coming from the card. Uh, I am inclined to run through a few basic checks first. And you wanna run through these mainly because they're so quick and so simple to do. Uh, namely, those are checking that RAM is seated properly and clearing the CMOS, because those two things could very well be causing the symptom we're seeing here. Now, it's gonna be a bit difficult to see, but uh, these two DDR4 modules are actually in slots A1 and B1, uh, whereas slots A2, right, is right here between these two DIMMs, and B2 are typically where you wanna install your first two DIMMs. Now, some boards might be weird, but uh, most boards I've worked with prefer A2 and B2 first. So what I'm gonna do is remove both of these DIMMs and move them over into uh, the other two open slots and try to power the system on like that. And by removing these modules, we'll ensure that once we reinstall them, that they're reinstalled correctly this time. Let's move this one over. Both of these modules do feel like they are installed correctly, so I doubt this is the issue. But having them in the incorrect slots, I mean, that could be a very kind of just finicky thing that could be preventing the system from posting. So now we are definitely good to go on RAM. Is it gonna work? I don't think so. Huh, I'm not all that surprised, but I did wanna rule out that variable. And uh, now what we should do is clear the CMOS. I'll show you how to do that right now. So with the system fully off, what you'll wanna do is, let's see, where are the two pins we need to jump? Because this board doesn't have a dedicated button for it. Uh, don't tell me they're behind the graphics card. This is the most annoying thing ever. Okay, well, uh, let's remove the card real quick to get to the pins we need to jump because yeah, this board doesn't have the button. Ah, okay, so actually the two pins are way down here at the bottom of the board next to the JFP1 header and these two fan hubs. Uh, it's kind of a good thing to remove the card anyway because we have better line of sight now where we're working. So if you look very closely, you'll see text under here that says something along the lines of clear CMOS or CMOS clear CLR and the two pins directly above that description are the two that we wanna jump. You wanna use something that's obviously metallic, something that can conduct electricity. And uh, so using, you know, like this Phillips head screwdriver I have here should be uh, good for that. We do this all the time. So you wanna hold this right over the two pins and you're gonna wanna hold it there with the system powered off for about 10 to 20 seconds. Now, you might be wondering, well, Greg, how is this supposed to work if the system's fully powered down? We're actually utilizing the battery on the motherboard to take care of this uh, this clearing. So you don't need power from the wall. I've seen people do it with the system on, and uh, I don't really advise that. If you do it the correct way, it should only take 10 to 20 seconds here. And uh, once we are finished with this, we can lift it back up, and then all we need to do now is reconnect power. Is this gonna work? Uh, I don't know, I doubt it, but you'd be surprised. Clearing the CMOS can uh, cure a number of computer ailments. It's just, I'm just not feeling this though. I don't, I don't really feel like this is it because I mean, for it to be down for a year, all because of the need to clear the CMOS? No, it can't be that simple. Whew. Okay, we're gonna be diving a bit deeper. The first thing I, I wanna tackle for sure, because this card is so old is just that, the graphics card. I think that swapping this out with our trusty GT710 should let us narrow down whether or not the card is the reason why we're not getting picture out. So let's do that right now. So out goes this, if I can get it out, there we go. And in goes this. We don't need supplemental PCI power, mind you. All the power is driven through the PCI slot. And let's give it a shot. A few moments later. Okay, uh, I'm starting to see why Geek Squad didn't want to take this on. I think it's extremely dirty that they took $100 from them. If, it, if in fact that happened, I mean, ultimately to do nothing, right? You didn't fix the problem. But uh, I can see why they might have wanted to not touch this. Because if, if it's not the obvious thing, then it's probably something much more in, intensive and maybe they just didn't want to deal with it. And if, that, if at that point you decide that you don't want to touch it, that's fine, but then don't take $100 from the guy. You know, that, that's just, 
that's awful. I mean, that, that's not a good look for your brand at all. So uh, I, I guess it's a good thing that it's not the graphics card, you know? I mean, despite this being quite old, it would still be pretty expensive to replace. So um, it's, it's nice that we've narrowed that down, but uh, that leaves just the motherboard, CPU, and power supply. I don't think RAM is bad. It's very rare that RAM is bad. I mean, usually it's just not installed correctly, but for the actual modules themselves to be defective, uh, that's, that's very rare. I suppose we can swap them out though very quickly just to be on the safe side. And then what we'll do after that is unplug every non-vital component with the exception obviously of the 24 pin, which we need and the eight pin EPS, which we also need. Now I know for a fact that these Corsair Vengeance LPX modules work. What I'm gonna do is stick with a single dim and try it in multiple slots to ensure we don't have a dead memory channel, which would ultimately be the responsibility of the CPU. Yeah, none of that worked. Uh, we tried every single memory slot with a single dim that again we know works and we still can get a post. There's a very loud bike passing by. And my infant daughter is crying. So I apologize if you hear either of those things in the background throughout this video. It's just one of those things I can't really get around at this point. Uh, so what this tells us is that uh, A, DDR4 isn't an issue. It's not what's causing the system not to post. And B, this isn't a memory channel issue, which rules out one potential problem with the CPU. That doesn't tell us that the CPU is fine. It just means that it's not memory channel specific, which again, more or less relies on the CPU. So uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is disconnect everything except for the 24 pin and the eight pin EPS. That includes removing both disk drives. Actually, one of them is a disk drive. The other one is a solid state drive. So this uh, team group NVMe, actually it's not even NVMe drive, it's a SATA drive. Uh, you know, we might need to upgrade that for the viewer. Now in this case, we'll need to jump the uh, front IO pins for power. Okay. There we are. So the system is actually on, even though it doesn't look like it's on. Uh, all the fans are disconnected. We're not going to leave it on for long, obviously. We don't want things overheating. But I forgot to disconnect the, <laughs> the SATA drive. Dang it, that's the one thing. Get on out of here, you. There we go. And uh, yeah, still doesn't seem to fix the problem. This is CPU related or motherboard related. I highly doubt it's the power supply. We could test it after the fact if neither of the other things work, but um, I think what we need to do now is swap CPUs. I, I can't think of any other reason why this system wouldn't turn on apart from maybe the fact that this graphics card is in the uppermost 16 lane slot. We could try uh, another full length slot. Um, it's not 16 lanes, but we could try it. Uh, the viewer told me that he did already, but uh, you know how that is. You always have to verify for yourself. Okay, um, CPU it is. Well, <laughs> at this point, our hands are tied. We're pretty much cornered by the platform. Uh, it's either the motherboard or the CPU. Again, I, I don't really have a reason to believe that the power supply is bad, considering it was already replaced. And it was only replaced because he needed a bit more wattage to run his uh, discrete card because it required a supplemental six pin that his old unit didn't have. So he had no other reason to upgrade it, but we're not, we're not getting, we're not getting anything. I don't know what the timeline for this was though. I mean, for all I know, it could have stopped working the moment he swapped power supplies. So if the PSU is in fact bad, and you know he noticed that the system stopped working the moment he put it in here, I mean, that would be all the information we need, right? It's the only variable that's changed between then and now. I, I don't think that's what it is, but I don't know. Let's, let's do the power supply first, just, just to rule it out because it is pretty important. So we've got our Passmark inline PSU tester connected. We're gonna power on the system by clicking this power button down here. And let's see how this goes. I have to hold it down, I forgot about that. Not hearing any beeps, which is always a good sign. Uh, that's a ripple, that's cool. And uh, timings, everything looks great. So I think the power supply is a-okay. So we're gonna swap CPUs then. At this point, I don't feel like we have any other choice. It is a bit more labor intensive than, uh, oh, there goes the back plate. It is a bit more labor intensive than say swapping RAM, but uh, it needs to be done. So what is this, uh, what is this CPU? So this here is a Ryzen 5 3600, which is a great CPU, one of the better value chips on the market, actually one of the best if you ask me. And uh, so I'm pleased to see it in here. It would be unfortunate if this is in fact the reason why the system isn't posting, but it is very easy to replace. I have several on hand. You know, just realized something. 
Ryzen 5 3600 B450 motherboard, an older B450 motherboard. Is it possible that the BIOS for this board is not compatible, or that the CPU rather is not compatible with the BIOS in this board? If that's the case, then that would 100% explain why we're not getting a post. If you put an incompatible CPU in a board like this, you won't see any picture, you won't get into your BIOS, nothing. You'll just have a black screen. It might boot up, it might power on. In fact, in most cases it will, but you won't get any picture because the system can't post because the necessary files aren't there to run system checks with the new CPU in it, the CPU that it doesn't recognize. So I'm going to replace the 3600 in here with a 2000 series Zen Plus CPU and see if that works. I bet you it will. And a quick visual inspection of the CPU. Everything looks good. I don't see any bent or missing pins and I don't see any gunk in the socket either. So in goes a Ryzen 5 2600. It's a bit awkward doing this with the PC standing up, but anyway, looks pretty good on camera. Now, is this gonna work? I sure as heck hope so. I, I do believe that it will. Um, I have every bit of faith that this will work this time. We're gonna reconnect the CPU cooler. Don't want that overheating, especially a chip that I know works. Come on, come on. Power cycling, that's actually a good sign. Um, it is probably training memory. This uh, notices that a new CPU is in there, a compatible one at that. And I think we should get, yes, there it is. So there's a picture. All right, so uh, we're not done yet. So, you know, you could stop here and I'm sure uh, at this rate, I mean, whoever, whichever geek squad this guy took the system to, I'm sure they probably, if they had gotten here would have said, yeah, it's just a dead CPU, but it might not be, okay? It might just be an incompatible BIOS. So what I'm gonna do now is upgrade or update this BIOS to the latest. So whichever board this is, we're gonna look it up online. We're gonna download that BIOS. We're gonna connect the USB drive that that BIOS file is on to the back of the board. And then we're gonna go in here and flash the updated one. And then we'll try putting this 3600 back in here because at that point, Zen 2 should be compatible with B450 boards. So let's give that a shot. I know I've said that a few times, just bear with me. So uh, actually what it looks like now, he has P4.50, this BIOS version installed currently. And this actually added support for 5,000 series CPUs. So the 3,000 series CPUs are definitely supported. In fact, that support was added way, way down here uh, in 3.2, I believe, where it says support uh, AMG next gen Ryzen processors. It doesn't say 3000 series or Zen 2, but I assume this is what they mean. And this was back in May of 2019. Uh, this actually adds up with the, uh, the owner's story actually. So if he has 4.5 installed and this BIOS revision came out in 11-19-2020, that means that this system theoretically could have been down for a year. That's, I mean, that's really something. So. I, I'm not really inclined to update. I mean, we could update his BIOS. It says that you really shouldn't, especially if you're gonna be using some of these other CPUs. But uh, I mean, we get a few Agesa updates and things with the latest BIOS revision. So we'll go ahead and update him to 5.0. What we'll do is click the global download link over here. We've got the file extracted and saved to the root of our thumb drive. We'll all connect it to a USB port at the back of the motherboard. You may need to connect to a USB 2.0 port depending on the drive used and the motherboard in question. And in the BIOS, we'll wanna click the tool tab followed by the instant flash icon. And this should find our uh, BIOS update here. We actually have two copies of it and uh, we'll click yes. Now you wanna make sure that you don't do this during uh, a thunderstorm or if you have really spotty power, make sure you're hooked up to a UPS or something because you don't want power to cut out while this is happening. If you don't have a secondary BIOS uh, backup, then you're gonna have a bricked board if this gets interrupted. So we'll click yes and we'll let this thing run through its paces without touching anything. Now, once it's completed, it may reset a few times, just let it do its thing. Eventually you'll either get into uh, Windows, if you have Windows installed, or you'll just get back into the BIOS uh, homepage. At that point, the flash is successful. All right, now with the BIOS updated and the original 3600 back in here, so his CPU, let's see if it works. We need to jump, I don't know why I'm reaching for the power button. Let's jump the pins and we can reconnect the CPU cooler. Yeah, I don't see, I don't think, there's always that weird delay with the cooler with a 3600 in here. I don't think it's gonna work now. Uh, if it didn't work before, 
again, I don't expect it to work now just because P4.50 already included support for Zen 2. So uh, just doing this as a precaution doesn't hurt to upgrade the BIOS anyway with the latest Agesa update. So, uh, yep, doesn't look like it's going to do the trick. So I think his 3600 is just bricked, which <laughs> that's, that's not a very common thing. But, uh, I mean, we've narrowed it down to just that specific variable. The other thing we can do is try the 3600 in a different platform, maybe a, an X570 or B550 board, uh, just to be sure. But uh, we know that the rest of its components work because we got a post with this fully functioning 2600. So something's up. So first we'll swap in our fully tested Ryzen 5 3600. We'll set up the remainder of his build. I also want to upgrade his storage, which we'll get to in a second, uh, and then clean up his cable management, clean up his build a bit, because it is a bit dusty. Uh, and then once we're finished with all of this, we'll set it aside and try one more time to get his original Ryzen 5 3600 to post. We'll give him some fresh thermal paste while we're in here. I like the X pattern for Ryzen CPUs, something like that, maybe a few extra dots around the edges. Doesn't have to be a work of art. It usually never is in my case. I'm gonna look pretty stupid if this doesn't work. But again, I have no reason to expect that it won't. That's weird, the CPU fan's always, it always takes a few seconds to turn on. Maybe it's in the wrong port. That's CPU fan two. That would be why. Let's move that over to the main CPU header. There we go. This, this has to work. Yes, okay. <laughs> Whew. Um, I was a little worried, I was a little, <laughs> a little scared there. Again, on paper, it should work, uh, especially with the, the, the new BIOS we have installed, and that is uh, P5, so P5.00, and that's the latest BIOS revision for this board. So he's up to date there. Uh, he has essentially the exact same CPU, just swapped over with one that actually works, and this one we're gonna have to do a few more tests on and we'll, we'll conclude the video with that. Uh, for now though, the reason why we're getting kicked into the BIOS is because we have his storage drive disconnected. He actually has two drives in here. Uh, he has a hard disk drive and this SATA, uh, it, it's actually a SATA M.2 drive. I have a solution though that's gonna give him much faster speeds and he's also gonna be able to uh, put more stuff on it because this is only a 512 gig SATA SSD. So let's uh, let's give them a bit of an upgrade, shall we? So this here is a crucial P5 Plus. This is a one terabyte PCIe 4 NVMe SSD. Now obviously his system isn't yet capable of PCIe Gen 4 speeds. That said, he'll still be able to essentially fully saturate Gen 3 speeds with this drive, which is excellent. And he can always migrate this to uh, a build that does support Gen 4 later on down the line if he wishes. This is double the capacity of his current drive. And best of all, it doesn't break the bank. Want to thank Crucial for being our product sponsor for this video and I'm going to show you how to install it. It's not too difficult with these NVMe drives. First you're going to want to find the uppermost NVMe slot which is typically right under the CPU socket. Then you want to match the key in the drive with the notch right there in the socket. It should slot in very easily just like that right there. Then you want to use the very tiny Phillips screw included in your motherboard's box to lock it down. You can find Crucial P5 Plus storage drives linked below if you are interested. Now at this point with the drive installed, we need to get Windows installed onto it. And to do that, we need to connect our USB bootable media to the back of our motherboard here. And to power the system on, we we'll want to choose the USB drive as the boot device. There should be no other bootable volume in this system because the only other thing in here is a hard disk drive. And that apparently just has games on it and then his original M.2 drive just had a basic operating system. He told me that since it's been a year already, I could go ahead and wipe that if I needed to. There was nothing important on it, and it was all backed up, which is, oh, it's always great to hear folks backing up their data. That is very important if you have sensitive files. All right, and with everything reconnected, uh, including his original graphics card, all of the smaller connections, front I.O., all the fans, the LEDs, etc. Everything else works. And again, I'm not surprised because we essentially tested everything else. By the time you get to the CPU, if the CPU is the culprit and you discover that just by, you know, process of elimination in general PC troubleshooting, you should probably have already tested everything else because to get that far into it, right, you want to rule out as many things as possible and you're 
more or less just removing parts at that point and testing them as you go. Uh, so CPU being bad is just, um, it, it's unfortunate, but it certainly could have been worse. If his graphics card had been dead, I'd say that was that would probably have been a little more cataclysmic. But uh, Windows is set up now. He's gonna have a blazing fast Windows experience now thanks to that new Crucial P5 Plus drive we installed. And uh, all he's gotta do is just sign in, set up his account, and he'll be good to go. We'll clean this up and set it aside. The last thing I wanna do then is test his Ryzen 5 3600. You'll have to pardon the mess. This is a very, very temporary setup. Obviously, we're just trying to see if this CPU works with a totally different platform. Uh, we are reusing the same GT710 we always do because we know it works. And I think that's it. Everything else is different. The motherboard's different, RAM is different, although I expect these really won't be uh, variables at play here. I do have a, uh, a stock AMD cooler atop the chip, and I use Carbonaut thermal pads, uh, in case you're wondering, the uh, uh, carbon pads that are very easy to swap from build to build, straight for troubleshooting. Is this jank setup gonna work? We'll find out. Actually, don't need a screwdriver. This has a power button on board. I guess I, I can't really see the screen from here, so I won't know if it works. This will actually, I didn't even think about this. This board has a Dr. Debug LED, so it'll tell us specifically what is wrong with it. Right now, the code is 9-0. That, that, uh, that doesn't sound too good. Now, I did a bit of research, and apparently on Reddit, there are several folks who have run into this postcode 90, and uh, more often than not, this ends up being an AMD thing. So postcode 90 means dead CPU. Uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Folks who have run into this code before have ultimately ended up replacing their CPU to get their systems working again. And uh, well, I'm not really surprised because we narrowed it down to the CPU ourselves. Uh, it just would have been nice to have a Dr. Debug LED on the original board. It really is a shame that these things are only usually on more expensive boards. I'd like to see this as a standard feature in the future. It would make troubleshooting so much easier for so many different platforms. So this was a success. We were successfully able to diagnose the issue at hand. We swapped out the CPU with basically an equivalent uh, and we also upgraded him. He's got a, a much faster NVMe drive, again, courtesy of Crucial in there. And we also cleaned up his system a bit. It's not deep cleaned. I don't think it, it really needs to be deep cleaned yet, although it certainly was getting there. There was a lot of surface dust that was starting to cake up. So I took it outside, dusted it with the electric duster, and uh, it looks quite a bit better now. Sorted cable management just a tad. He already did fairly well with cable management. The, the rear behind the motherboard tray looked fine. And uh, I mean, I think it all works really well. You know, his, his graphics card is a bit weak, sure, but uh, in this market, you really can't complain. At least he has something uh, that can help him with display out. Now I do still have his other graphics card. I was gonna show that to you in this video and maybe even attempt to fix it if it is broken, but uh, I've been spending all day on this build so far and uh, I just wanna break it up. I don't wanna do it all in one video. It's too much at this point. So uh, I'm going to take a look at that. If I think it's worthy of a video, if I think it's something I can fix, maybe we'll film that but uh, if I don't have the time, I might just end up giving it back to him and, and he can always just swap that into here now that this system works and, and test it himself. Shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, with that, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. If you have not subscribed already, get subscribed. That would be also greatly appreciated. And be sure to leave your feedback in the comment section below. I always love reading your comments, especially in the first like hour or so. I mean, those are the really, those are really the best comments because uh, those who are willing to be here uh, very quickly, especially right after the video is published, you know, barring any time zone issues. I know I can't publish at the optimal time for everybody, but uh, the comments within the first few hours are always uh, very refreshing. And even the critiques that I see in there, you know, some people might think it's it's negative, but uh, I do appreciate them. You know, the folks that are willing to be as prompt as they are, usually their feedback is the most valuable. Stay tuned for additional episodes this season. I have plenty in the queue. We see, we seem to get like three or four at least every day. And uh, that's just in the Orlando, Florida area, which is uh, pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, in one sense, it's uh, a bit disappointing that this many systems have issues, but in another, it's great that we can make this much content and help out this many folks in the area as well. So uh, stay tuned for all of that. I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for fixing a system with me.